Hey everybody, it's Alexander Dahl with Manifest Vitality once again. Uh, so again, I have another interview ready, so we're going to go ahead and just jump straight into that. Here you go. All right, so I'm on the phone with Four. He's somebody that reached out to me about the current interview series. So I'm going to go ahead and give him the chance to introduce himself. Um, how's it going, guys? My name is Four, or known as Four Eyes for my artist's name. Um, I was born in Los Angeles, California, but right now I'm living in Angela City, Pampanga, in the Philippines, and uh, I came here to represent the city. Awesome. So uh, what kind of music are you into? Uh, you, you sent me some information indicating that you uh, produce music and then also you're, you're into making hip hop beats. Is that like the all encompassing um, avenues that you take towards music? Um, well, like the main music that I that I'm really into ever since I was a kid was hip hop music. So um Go into some detail about how you first identified with music. What kind of really, what happened that made you really connect with it and made you realize that that's what you wanted to do with your life? Well, um, ever since I was a kid, all I did was listen to music. Like my grandpa would play different um, types of music, such as the Beatles, Elvis, a lot of 1950s type of stuff. And uh, I was also exposed to rock music because of my dad, like things like, Led Zeppelin, and um, mm -hmm. uh, I remember he used to play Air Supply as well, and Queen. I'd al I'd always look at the covers, and um, so yeah, I had so much influ influence from 1950s rock and um, um, like 2000s rock as well. And from my sister, that's when the hip hop really started, like that early 2000 MTV type of music videos with 50 Cent and Eminem and yeah I think uh I really got influenced by Eminem since he was so lyrical and from the sure. big movie Eight Mile sure. you know just how was it growing up in Los Angeles and, and viewing that music scene and then uh moving to the South Pacific like was there a bit of a culture shock there yeah definitely a culture sh shock in terms of music and lifestyle as well because like you know, in LA, the the city is so busy, you know, mm -hmm. things are going on all the time, especially with music, like, it just rotates so fast, you know, especially with pop and rap music, you know, so like, in LA, like with my friends in middle school, they'd always listen to like, well, during the time, like 2013 ish, 2012, like, the people who were popping were like Mac Miller, Odd Future. So it's like, so many different types of styles you know even bob so like i was really meshing into and getting into like pop type of rap and like uh, alternative hip-hop so just different types of styles from la mm -hmm. all of the different talents coming in and sure. from philippines it was just all different as well you know they're really big into alternative hip-hop too i've noticed into my local scene and like boom bap so um, definitely the type of music I'm making is different from what's happening in my local scene because I don't see anyone doing the same type of thing, you know? So uh, you you mentioned that you first kind of identified with music based off of uh, the music that your parents uh, kind of introduced you to. What what were some of your first steps into developing your own music and then uh, finding like the type of voice that you wanted to have within music? Uh, yeah, so like pre like before I stated that I was into like rock and hip hop, you know, being influenced by my grandpa, my dad, and also my sister. Um, mm -hmm. When I was younger, I took up gu guitar lessons just to play. And uh, I think that was one of the reasons why music sparked for me, you know, and I used it as an escape. And um, I just took those talents like to Philippines and... Uh, opened up a music software, FL Studio, and started sampling music and uh, sort of created my own type of sound, you know, with rock and hip hop mm -hmm. and uh, with those trap drum type beats. And that's how it all started. Okay. So you kind of started developing beats. Did you work with any other uh, lyricists or rappers that uh, were putting uh, vocals onto your beats? Or did you just kind of immediately think that, you know, I'm already making the beats. I might as well throw vocals on here too. Yeah, that's like at first when I started making beats, 
I was like, okay, I'll just be a producer. But I noticed I was like, hold on, these beats kind of have potential. So mm -hmm. I realized and like believed in myself, like, oh, maybe I can rap. Like I wrote a couple couple bars before when I was younger. So I was like, you know what? Might as well try it and make a song. And uh I decided to make my own beats and write my own lyrics. And uh yeah, but even before when I started producing only, I would uh just send beats to any local artist or like underrated artists that I see with like under a thousand followers and see if they'd use it. Sure. Uh, so how long did you really kind of do that before, before you kind of really, uh, you know, established your uh, alias and then uh, really kind of uh, committed to making your own project? Oh yeah. Um, so like I've been doing beats for about a year. So it started in, well, grade seven, I was making beats, but uh, when I was about third year high school, that's when I actually started uploading my own beats. And uh, I was uploading beats for about, I want to say, maybe six months. And then after that, or a year, and then um, my sister bought me a mic. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was it. I made my first song <laughs> just nice. out of the fly. <laughs> yep. Okay. And so... Uh... Where would you say you are currently in your music scene? Uh, do you feel like you're more of on an independent label or do you feel like you're getting some like local notor notoriety? Um, I think a little bit of both, but I think I'm still leaning on the independent side, you know? Mm -hmm. um, definitely, I still have to win a lot of people over, but I think I'm turning some heads. They're starting to notice my potential and my music. Mm -hmm. Definitely more than before, I can tell you that. And, um, yeah, still independent, but I'm getting a little bit of notoriety in the local scene for sure. Sure. And what's it like working with the other musicians in your local music scene? Oh, it's fun. Like, it's super fun. Like, our aim is not really to make a single. It's more on to create, you know? And um, whatever we create, if it's really good, we'll decide to put it out, you know? Mm-hmm. Our plan is not just make one song and hope it's good, you know. We'll keep making multiple songs until we have that golden song that's worth uploading, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you ever encounter any sort of, like, pushback from the local music scene where uh, they either don't appreciate what you're doing or for whatever reason there's just competition? Mm, I'm not sure if they don't appreciate it, but I feel like um, they just don't know yet, like, because mine's my type of genre or the way I take my my take on hip hop is a bit different in the local scene. So it's kind of like tilting their head like, huh, this one's kind of different. Maybe it turns them off. Maybe it scares them away. But um, I'm pretty sure they don't like I'm pretty sure they appreciate it, at least, you know, the effort in terms of what I'm doing with the music. Sure. And so when you're. When you're uh, interacting with the local music scene, are you doing any live performances or are you just kind of uh, pushing out the recordings that you've done? Uh, just pushing out the recordings I've done online because um, since COVID hit, I haven't had the chance to like try and book any shows. Sure. It's like um, now I'm more confident. I definitely have more music to put out. So uh I'm more prepared if I ever do a show in the future, you know, but since COVID hit, I can't really do anything except for record music and put it out online. Okay. Um, so prior to COVID uh, hitting and shutting things down, uh, you didn't, yeah. uh, you weren't able to get out and do any performances or anything? Yeah, no, I wasn't like, um, I wasn't really confident yet. You know, I didn't know how to, market myself, how to connect with other people, you know? So definitely I felt myself grow more because I realized how to connect with more people, how to reach out to more organizations and businesses with music. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely before you could say I was like lost in the dark. I was just shooting in the dark, hoping for something to happen. Okay. And so what are some of your ambitions with what you're making and how, how do you want to see your art progress and be received? 
Um, my ambitions are just can continue to create music and have a strong fan base. Um, maybe sign a record label, but uh, if I don't, I think it's okay. It's really important for me that people support me and like my music. I think that's the number one ambition and goal that I want to reach and um, gain traction and popularity onto Spotify playlists. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think that's the wave right now. That's my, my goal right now. Just keep, you know, making music and uh, hoping it get on, get, gets onto playlists. Sure, definitely. So what are a couple stories of some really like prominent moments that have happened to you, uh, whether it be, you know, watching music be performed, recording music, just uh, things that really stand out in your memory? Like, um, like music in my personal experience happening to me or like I'm watching someone perform music and it inspired me? Uh, either or. Okay. Um, well, the first one that comes to mind is uh, I was in fourth grade and I was all, always known as that music kid because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I really loved the Beatles, you know, and I really loved my grandpa. So it's like just a two and two, two and two connection. So I would literally have the bowl cut haircut of the Beatles. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'd also I'd always wear their graphic tees, mm -hmm. and um, but the weird part was I never sang the Beatles song. My <laughs> my classmates would always go to me and be like, "Oh, Chris, rap," you know. And mm -hmm. then uh, I'd literally bust a freestyle about school or you know stuff like that. Sure. So even in elementary, I'd just rap and beatbox with my friends just for fun, even though it wasn't serious, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, Grade seven, you know, I still picked that up. I was still rapping. It was more on Eminem type of stuff. And uh, I'd always have my earphones on. People always noticed that. And um, there are times when I'd rap the lyric real, like perfectly, a perfect Eminem bar. Mm -hmm. And then um, my friends would just like turn to me and like look at me. And I wouldn't even notice that I'm rapping the song, you know. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Another experience is um, I went to a concert like around 2013 okay. and uh, Paramore was performing. They were performing Ain't It Fun. I was in front row, like me and my cousins literally snuck on there. <laughs> we went out to front row and I was just looking at Haley Williams. I was like, oh my God, her vocals are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just vibing so hard and I was just imagining like, damn, that could be me one day, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was definitely a big experience, I guess, a good key factor. Yeah, definitely. So with the the two stories that uh, you kind of told, there's kind of a common theme there of, um, like, a, a group uh, inspiration. So in the first story, you know, your friends kind of inspired you to, to continue your craft. And then uh, in the second story, you know, you were inspired by, you know, watching a group perform. So what what sort of things do you think that you uh, would like to inspire in people that want to listen to your music? Um, I think uh, what do I want to inspire? Well, to people who listen to my music, I hope it gives them an escape in terms of like um, negativity in their life and sadness, mm -hmm. you know, because in my music, I really talk about a lot of sad stuff like 90% of it is sad stuff. And uh, I just hope that it connects and relates to them. So at least they feel like they're not alone, you know? So that's something I really want to aim for. Sure. Um, meaningful awesome. music. Um, so why don't you go ahead and uh, give us some of your links? Where can people go and listen to your music? Um, yeah, they can um, go on Spotify and type in Four Eyes. I'm the only one there, even Apple Music. Um, they can follow me at on Instagram at it's four eyes, no underscore, just straight up words. It's four eyes. And, um, same thing for Twitter, same handle. And, um, even on Facebook as well, they can just type in four eyes and I'll be there. Nice. Okay. And so yeah. I like even to, YouTube as well. 
Awesome. Uh, I'll definitely make sure to get those links uh, into the description for uh, this interview when I publish it. Uh, so what cool, I like to cool. do is um, give the person that I'm interviewing like the last word. So pretty much just like a message that you want to put out there, something that like resonates with you. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, my last words are um, to whoever who's listening, I hope you have a great day or great evening. And um, whatever's happening, just keep going. In time, things will get better, you know. Find your escape, whether that's music, watching a movie, or even sleeping, you know. Um, just know that in the future, everything will get better, no matter what. And uh, if there's anyone hating on you or not supporting, just throw up the middle finger and just do what you do, you know. As long as you do what you love, that's what matters. It's not really about the goal. But it's about die trying, you know, as long as you try, that's what matters.